Why wouldn't I be? Oh. Beep it, we gotta shock him. Get him out of the water. He's trying to up him. Clear. You gotta... Kind of quite literally just sacrificed himself to shock the patient. Really interesting character development here. I love how the patient is truly mirroring each of them and letting them know how they truly feel. Very excited to be reacting to House MD season four, episode five, Mirror Mirror. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House episodes. This will be episode 86. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. That guy. You're gonna remember that guy for the rest of your life. Give me all your cash. Wanna buy yourself a pretty dress, you little bitch? You wanna die tonight? I said, where's your wallet? Look, go in his pockets, grab his wallet. Good, let's go. Yeah, I need an ambulance <laughs> at Maple and Fourth. He's a really sick guy. I think he got mugged. Because is a healthy man's lungs to fail, leaves no fingerprints. Laryngeal spasm. You can leave. I just hired him. Well, I fired him. To infinity. Dr. Foreman will be my eyes and ears. Give the patient a methacholine challenge. See if it sets off laryngeal spasm. The thieves called an ambulance for him after they stole his wallet and triggered an attack. So kind. That's like divorcing your wife over text message, then sending across a Mars bar in the post. The patient definitely has an interesting condition though, sudden reversible breathing difficulty. We know he has no hives or rashes on the chest, an x-ray was normal. House is not so happy about Foreman being back, but he did bring up a good idea, spasm of the upper airway, also known as laryngospasm. Now the team want to test this using an agent called methacholine. What does that do? Well, the relaxation and spasm of the muscles are controlled by the sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system respectively. When we take a blue inhaler that contains a drug called salbutamol, that activates receptors in the sympathetic nervous system causing relaxation. Do you know what the neurotransmitters in the parasympathetic nervous system are called? Acetylcholine, which sounds a lot like methacholine. And that's because they work in similar ways by causing airway spasm in those who have what we call airway hyper-responsiveness. This is actually a test for asthma and not laryngospasm, but pretty cool that they included it either way. Let's see what happens. Hopefully they'll have a plan for if his airway shuts, unlike the Air Force pilot that they treated in a previous episode who started refusing oxygen as she was going into respiratory arrest. Oh, house. Cuddy, I can make you miserable. It's true. Until you quit. I'm not quitting. You're gonna be miserable. I already am miserable. My foot's tingling Is and it? my stomach's killing me. Could this guy call that stuff? No. You're the favorite? Houses? To get fired. 500 on Cutner. Oh, a thousand on Amber. How do we connect abdominal pain and numbness in the extremities with respiratory collapse? Patient just crashed. He's got a pulse. Must be another respiratory collapse. You're obviously in an impossible position. There's no point in me humiliating you. So I'm gonna humiliate Cuddy until she fires you. It's Munchausen. Three left-sided numbness, 402, syncope. He's copying his neighbor's symptoms. He's in a lab coat. Munchausen's pretend to be patients, not doctors. He's got mirror syndrome. Giovannini's. Whoa, wait a minute. Mirror syndrome? We've spoken about this condition before, but there was a slight difference to mention. It was in a pregnant woman, but now Foreman is saying it's Giovannini's, which I've never heard of before. So I have to admit, I needed to look this one up. It originates from a case report by a doctor called Giovannina back in 2007. The patient suffered from brain damage in the frontal and temporal areas and began taking environmental cues to describe his personality. Every time his environment changed, then so did his identity. He was totally unaware of this and couldn't form new memories as he suffered from anterograde amnesia, essentially turning him into a human chameleon. And that's when he knew that he was perfect to run for office. That last bit isn't true, but it would be a very funny ending. Researchers aren't quite convinced this type of mirror syndrome is even a thing, as only two cases have ever been described, but definitely interesting where this is gonna go. Maybe he'll see Amber and start planting dog collars, see Cuddy and hire back Chase and Cameron, then see House and deplete the East Coast of its entire Vicodin stores. Question for you smart people, what is the weirdest syndrome you've ever heard of? Answers down below. Do you know another mirror syndrome? There's a faster way. House, who is this guy? Ow! Can't fake that. 
only thing different was the temperature. Cold agglutins means? It's got to be some kind of infection. Keep him in the isolation room so he doesn't pick up extreme bitch syndrome from one of the nurses. We're in the ultrasound and the blood cultures. Infections can hide deep beneath the skin. I'm done. Lesion on the liver. Cystic or solid? Solid. I want all my personal private doctors back right now. Your team, Foreman included, is dealing with the great mayonnaise panic. Lesion on the liver. Ideas? Start with a biopsy to rule out cancer. I think the black pus is fungal. Whoa, 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 that nurse insult was uncalled for. Yes, some nurses can get angry or upset with doctors, but in my experience, that's because of one of four reasons. Either they're worried about a patient and feel their concerns aren't being met, the management plan hasn't been communicated to them, they have personal issues going on, or this is a bit of a controversial one, they're dealing with a female junior doctor. I have to say, on the whole, my experiences with nurses has been amazingly positive, but I was quite surprised when some of my fellow female colleagues hadn't quite experienced the same. To find out more about this, I decided to look at the literature, and I saw a few papers with one standing out from Galvin and colleagues in 2015. The researchers took an obstetric and gynecology ward in the US and reviewed over 2,200 evaluations of junior doctors. They found that the female junior doctors received praise 17.3% of the time, whereas male junior doctors received it 40% of the time. Negative feedback for the male juniors was there only in 3% of evaluations, and for females, it was over five times more common with 17% of evaluations. That's a massive difference. There were what seemed like contrast to this in other studies though, like St. Pierre and colleagues, this study looked at hundreds of studies on the nurse-physician relationship and found that many female nurses actually preferred working with female doctors and could even feel belittled by male doctors on occasion. They also felt female doctors were more likely to accept the nurse's recommendation. Does that really contradict the other paper though? Well, we know that our satisfaction with a situation or a person is related to how the actual performance or experience measures up in relation to our expectations. If the expectations from the female juniors is much higher, then they'll have a harder time living up to it, which will likely leave the nurse disappointed. As interesting as all of that is, while we're over here speaking about gender bias, our patient is slowly collecting black pus in their liver, and we have no idea why. Black pus is classically associated with the black plague, but that tends to also cause buboes on the skin and under the armpits, and we've already had that diagnosis in another episode, so it's unlikely to come up again. Other things it could be are necrosis of the liver that can cause it to appear black, old blood that has been just sitting around, autoimmune conditions like suppurative cholangitis could cause inflammation in the bile ducts, which could cause this black infected pus, or it could be another type of infectious disease like an amoebic infection, or bacterial like actinomyces, or fungal like abscesses such as aspergillosis. Interestingly though, when we add to the mottled rash we saw on the hand, which the team say is a sign of cold agglutinin disease, then we could narrow it down a bit. That rash, by the way, is called erythema ab igni or toasted skin syndrome, and it's from recurrent heat exposure to an area like ladies who keep putting hot water bottles on their stomach for period pain relief as an example. Cold agglutinating disease, sudden breathlessness with normal x-rays, liver abscess, all point to mycoplasma infection. That will be my first diagnostic guess. It's a type of bacteria that usually infects the respiratory system and creates a milder condition than usual pneumonia, which can linger on. It's spread through coughing via respiratory droplets and can have cycles of outbreaks in nursing homes and cruise ships. Maybe our mirror syndrome patients saw an episode of Popeye and went out to sea. If that's true, then they can confirm it with a urine test and treat with doxycycline, which will fix him up. Let's find out. I think the black pus is fungal. Amber's putting him on amphotericin. I miss my old life helping people who barely have clean water, let alone the kind of medicines we waste by the SUV load. I'm gonna stay till the patient's cured. I'd say he's mimicking whichever one of us happens to be dying. Heating blanket wasn't keeping him warm enough. It means what was in his liver was the fungus. And it wasn't even pus. It was just coagulated blood caused by the cold agglutinins. We're going to use your spinal fluid to tell us where you lived. There are 300 million people in this country. If I'm doing exactly what everyone else is doing, then who the hell am I? High titers to histoplasmosis. Probably lived in the Ohio River Valley. Or he ate lettuce from Honduras. Yes! You're right, buzzkill. You're happy. 
Why wouldn't I be? Oh. Beefy, we gotta shock him. Get him out of the water. He's trying to I'm clear. You gotta kind of quite literally just sacrificed himself to shock the patient. Really interesting character development here. I love how the patient is truly mirroring each of them and letting them know how they truly feel. Brilliant from the writers. Kind of loves novelty and going against the crowd as it makes him special. Foreman is actually happy working with House because he does whatever is necessary even if it's against protocol and Taub wants to do the sideways bedroom slalom with Amber as aggressive isn't always bad. But why has Kutner's courageousness landed him a date with the hospital floor? We know the patient was wet when they wanted to defibrillate, which is dangerous because water is an incredibly efficient conductor of electricity. That means the water on the surface can create new conduction pathways which don't include the patient's heart, misdirecting all that energy right back at the rescuer. It can also increase risks of burns to the patient as the electricity gets overly concentrated on the skin. It's still not clear what the patient has and House's attempt to track the patient's history based on the antibodies will just never work as in real life diseases don't have such a high degree of focal difference to make it worthwhile. It worked. For one of them. I like the dedication. You're insane. Nothing on the blood cultures. Do them again. We know the infection is in his heart. We do a biopsy. I got you a job. I don't want the job. Are you smiling? No. His name's Robert Elliott. He's from Hamilton, Ohio. Why did you volunteer to go street walking? Didn't want to look in the mirror. I'm scared. It's gonna be okay. No, it's not. Nothing on the biopsy. My name's Robert Elliott. I'm from Hamilton, Ohio. Should we use this stuff? Doesn't smell like dumb. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did House just get the patient to mirror himself? Inception level mind games going on there. The patient has been working with Dung and I've got two diagnostic guesses, but three diagnoses that this could potentially be brucellosis, leptospirosis, or Q fever. All can be contaminants of animal feces and can cause cold agglutinin disease by creating antibodies to attack their own cells. Okay, for the second diagnostic guess, I'm gonna have to go with Q fever as the patient is getting hot right now at the end of the episode, so that has to be a clue. It's caused by a bacteria known as Coxiello bonetti that can start with cough, fever, headache, pretty much flu-like symptoms. Then it can cause heart symptoms and hepatitis later down the line. So that fits so well, that's why it's taking the second spot. And then my third diagnostic guess goes to brucellosis because leptospirosis is mainly transmitted by rat urine and both could fit the symptom profile. So we are locked in. Now is the time you stare at me. Slack-jawed amazement. Pig farms, where you have pig poo, you have epirithrozyne infection. We'll start him on clarithromycin. Epirithrozoon infection in humans. Ah, another condition I've never heard of. So I had to look it up. Guess what the bacteria that causes this infection is called? Mycoplasma suisse. What was my first guess? Mycoplasma infection. Now, I have to admit, I wasn't thinking about this specific type of mycoplasma. I was thinking about mycoplasma pneumoniae. So I was right, but for all the wrong reasons. Mycoplasma suisse is a small parasitic bacteria that usually affects pigs and is tough to detect because it doesn't have a cell wall. That means when it gets stained, it doesn't hold the stain so it can stay invisible. It generally affects pigs rather than humans. And so human infections are extraordinarily rare. Treatment is pretty simple with antibiotics and he should go back to normal soon. Incredible. I love the power dynamics in this episode as even though Giovannini's or this new mirror syndrome is a made up condition, the patient seems to take on the character with the most authority in the room. And so he took on House's character over 13's when they went in together. Universal have exceeded themselves with this one. Also, still need to see who gets fired for Chase's bets. You know where Cuddy is? Hi. I'm the Dean of Medicine. Hi. I'm the guy who saved your life. You have great yabos. You lose. I have always thought my breasts were one of my best features. None of you are fired. What's your cut? 50%. They bet with their money and they won their pride, except 
Pride doesn't keep the lights on. In all fairness, in the grand scheme of things, this little hustle is pretty tame compared to all his break-ins, rogue treatments, and restraining order violations. Really good episode, I'd say 8 out of 10 entertainment, 7 out of 10 accuracy, 8 out of 10 diagnosis. This only makes sense if you watched the previous one where things aren't quite as they appear over here.